hot hatch or just a shopping trolley with big wheels. Following in the footsteps of some illustrious forebears, we test drive the Renault Clio Sport 172 to see if it can live up to its sporting heritage. Even though Volkswagen can lay claim to being the originators of the very first GTI, when a group of engineers popped a peppy 1.6 litre engine into the Mark 1 Golf way back in 1976, there are a number of other big car manufacturers that have made some very significant contributions to the genre over the years. Chief among them is Renault. From the Renault 5 Turbo back in the 1980s and its crazy homologation special, steroid pumped big brother the Turbo 2, Renault established itself as a company who had hot hatchery at its core. It later went on to build on that reputation with the critical and commercial success of the Clio, helped no end by a very slick ad campaign. Remember Papa and Nicole? There's always room for a little improvement. This commercial success led to the development of what many consider to be one of the best hot hatches of the 90s, the Renault Clio Williams. The Clio 16 valve, from which the more powerful limited edition Williams was derived, was substantially developed over the base car. Responsibility for creating the original Clio hot hatch was handed over to the Renault Sport division. They began in earnest by squeezing the 1.8 twin cam 16 valve unit from the Renault 19 into the Clio's relatively tiny engine bay. Squeezing all that engine into such a small space made for a very tight fit, but all the hard work was worth it, as the Clio produced a very impressive 137 bhp and a good stream of power all the way through the rev range. With a little Clio weighing in at less than a ton, this translated to blistering performance figures. 0 to 16 in less than 8 seconds was not only faster then, but it's pretty quick now. Jump forward almost a decade to 2002, and hot hatch lovers have never had it so good. Every manufacturer worth its salt, or even with salt acquiring aspirations, is falling over itself to produce the definitive fire breathing pocket rocket for the noughties. This time, heading the pack for Renault, is a Clio 172. Soon you travel no more than a couple hundred meters, you realize straight away that this is a, a very serious bit of kit. The suspension, the steering, everything feels very tightly tuned. The best I can liken it onto is a bit like um, Super WRX. You feel plugged in immediately, it makes you feel like you want to drive and drive fast. this car as well because it's small you feel quite confident um, forcing it through small gaps two cars coming down the road you, you've got a pretty good idea that your car is going to fit so it's, it gives you confidence to you know weave it up and down even some quite narrow roads unlike that big beast there People seldom use the vehicles they have for what they're designed for. You've got a big 4x4, maybe an X5. You don't take it off-road. You just don't. You buy it for the status, the way it looks, the imperial feel of riding high above everybody else. So the fact that it's got some off-road technology, X5 not an awful lot, but it's got some off-road technology, will never get used. The wheels are barely going to get dirty. 
of people with massive people cars, you know, they may or may not use that to capacity. More chance of doing that. With a hot hatch, however, that's different. A hot hatch is something you can use every day. A good hot hatch, you can drive it to work, relative comfort, it's got mod cons, you can fit stuff in it, you've got two or four doors, um, reasonable economy, it does everything. And when you want, when the road opens up, you can put your foot down and have a blast like you're in a mini supercar. So hot hatches really are the cars you can use to do any and everything in. The pack with technology, ABS, traction control, and you know the perfect hot hatch formula. Small car, big engine. This guy is a tiny car, weighs less than a ton. And it's got a two-litre, 172 bhp engine. It's crazy, but you know I love it. Small car, big engine, big fun. This kind of road is made for this car. Lovely winding road. Fantastic. This kind of road is absolutely made for this car. Absolutely. It's just perfect. I could drive up and down this road all day long. It's fantastic. Just round the bends. Beautiful. Absolutely fantastic handling on roads like this. Not only does it handle well, it makes you want to drive the car faster and faster. Absolutely. Fantastic. Ooh. Here we are, full circle. Um, the beginning. What do you reckon, Dream Car Garage? Well, for me, the Clio 172 is most definitely worthy of its ancestral line, and as such, it more than lives up to its heritage. It's fast, handles fantastically well, and has enough creature comfort so you don't feel like you're paying penance all the fun you're having. It must be said that this car is no limousine. On some of Britain's broken, pot-ridden inner city roads, you're definitely not going to be cushioned all that well from the varied surfaces, but the payoff for all that non-compliant is superb high-speed handling and a thoroughly addictive talent for sweeping through bends and around corners at speeds that cars with twice the power would struggle to keep pace with. It's cute to look at, but not in a your big girl's blouse kind of way. Visually it's benefited from just the right amount of steroids to make it look well built, but not so much as you simply think, FREAK! As always, Dream Car Garage, this car is for sale. Um, it's a 2002 Reg car. And what's unusual about this car is that it was owned by an old gentleman for the last six years. And he used it as his, as his second weekend car. It's okay for some. So as a result, it's only done 26,000 miles in eight years. And that's backed up with service history and old MOTs. New, this car would have been about, say, 15,000 pounds, give or take. So now, if you sprinkle a little bit of Dream Car Garage magic over it, it drops down from £15,000 to just £4,500. You can't beat that, can you, really? That really is pocket money for a pocket rocket. So, there we have it. I hope you've enjoyed the show. And remember, Dream Car Garage, don't just dream it, drive it. <laughs>